What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So we've been going through the basics of um, everything from modeling to adding plants and setting up lighting. Now I wanted to make a detailed video walking you through creating your actual image export and how those settings work inside of twin motion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a video talking you through how the actual export process for images works inside of twin motion. So I've gotten some questions about things like image resolutions and things like that and I wanted to kind of talk through some of that stuff with you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to start off by creating an image. And so one thing I want to note, and we're in media mode right now, we're going to leave media mode for just a second. Media mode is where you preview um, or you preview your different settings and things like that. So you can adjust these settings all day long, your lighting and your weather, and but where you're actually going to set these up to be a part of your image and a part of your export is going to be under the media option. And so I will probably get into some of these other settings a little bit later, um, but for right now what we want to do is we want to create an image. And so this is going to be where you're going to set up your actual image export inside of Twin Motion. So um, in order to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to go into media, and then you're going to click on the button for image. And so this is where all of your different images are going to live. And so each one of your images has a series of settings that live inside of it that are going to dictate how that image looks. So if I was to click through each one of these, you can see how I have exterior views, I have interior views, I have night views. So each one of these is its own image and it has its own different look to it. And the reason for that is because each one of these images has settings associated with it that are going to set up your scene. And so so one thing I want to point out when you're doing this is you're going to notice that whenever you have one of these images selected, you're going to get this little pink button right here that says quit media mode. And what that means is that means that currently you are in media mode, which is a mode that's inside of twin motion that allows you to change your image settings. So the other thing about that though, is that means if you go into like your nature settings, you can't change your localization, weather or lighting inside of those settings because those actually live inside of this image that you currently have selected. So all of those things are going to get set in here, but if you ever get in here and you can't get back to any of these settings, you can just click the button for quit media mode in order to get back to your normal editor space. So let's go ahead and take a look at this image that we're working with over here on the right hand side. And so what I want to do is I want to look at just some of the settings and what's contained in here and what you can do with this. So to start off, um, you can adjust your time. So just like you can in your model, you can also use this to adjust your time um, for your actual rendering itself. So this is where you're going to set the time of day. So this would be a nighttime view. This would be a morning view. Um, you can see how you can adjust this to really whatever time you want. And uh, so this is how you're going to adjust your sunlight settings and your time of day in here. So in addition to that, there's a little button over here that says more. And so what more is going to do is that's going to get you into this window right here that's going to allow you to adjust all of your different image settings, kind of like the ones that we looked at before, like your localization. And all of these settings are getting saved inside of this particular image. And it's going to be different for each one of these images. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start off, we're going to take a look at our camera settings. And I've gotten this question a lot. So the way that you adjust your camera your image size is by clicking on this button right here for output size and selecting one of these options. So this is where you would set if you want like a 4K image. In addition, you can also set a custom width and height by clicking on the more button right here. So you're going to be able to adjust that here. You can also set your field of view. So how much you're going to be able to see with your camera. So maybe I'll set this field of view to something like 70 and maybe adjust my camera view over a little bit. So perspective correction, we're not going to worry about too much right now. And then vignette is going to is going to affect uh, if you want to have like a darker um, shade around the outside of your image. So in this case, I'm not really too worried about that. And then you can also, if you have multiple phases of something in here, you can adjust the look of that here. I don't, so we're just going to kind of ignore that for right now. Um, we've already talked about localization. That's where you can set what direction your sun is facing, as well as your actual location of your model in a physical world. 
So weather, you can adjust if you're gonna have clouds in here. Um, the one thing I wanna focus on here is you can see how because this is more of a morning scene and the way the sunlight is coming through, um, you're getting kind of a, you can see how out on your horizon here, um, your sun is kind of being blocked by this smog setting. So you can adjust the smog in here. That's basically gonna adjust if you have like particles in your air that are gonna kind of scatter the light. I like having a little bit of that in the background just because um, if you turn it all the way off, you can see that this has kind of a tiled um, texture on here and it doesn't look super realistic. So having a little bit of smog in there is gonna bring up your overall brightness and it's also gonna block some of this tiling that's contained in this scene. So you do have to be a little bit careful with how strong you use that but you can definitely have that in your scene in order to generate a little bit of that effect so and if you drag it all the way up then it's gonna be super smoggy um, so we're not gonna worry too much about wind speed and direction right now those are more um, video type things but again you can set you can set things like how much clouds are in the background and if it's raining and that kind of thing. So I'm going to add a little bit of cloudiness here. And part of the reason I want to do that is because I want to show you something that we can adjust in order to make this look a little bit more realistic and a little less contrasty. Um, so now let's go into our lighting settings. And we talked about the exterior lighting settings in a previous video that I will link to in the notes down below. But, and so we're not going to talk too much about these sunlight settings other than what you might want to consider doing is playing around with your sun brightness and also your ambient light to uh, adjust the different contrasts that are in here. So you can see how the ambient light is going to adjust how bright or not bright the contrast is between your shadows. So the areas where the sun isn't shining directly are going to get controlled by your ambient and then the areas where your sun is shining, those are going to get controlled by your sun power. So you can kind of adjust those in order to get the look you're going for there. We've talked about these other settings, so let's not get too in-depth with these right now. Um, but you can adjust these until you kind of get the look that you're going for. So if you've got some areas that are really bright, you can turn your GI up um, in order to get more light into those areas. So like for example, if I turn that all the way down, you can see how it's a lot dimmer on the interior of my building than if I was to turn this up. So that's because the light is bouncing into this room and lighting it. And the higher your GI is, the more of that you get in your scene. The shadow slider is going to adjust how defined the edges on your shadows are. So if you want soft shadows, you can turn this up. If you want um, more defined shadows, you can turn this down. And then ambient occlusion is going to affect how much um, how, how much detailing you get in the little nooks and crannies and corners and that kind of thing. And again, I just want to know all of this is being saved inside of this particular image. So you can also turn depth of field on. So that might be something that you do in this case, maybe instead of using the smog, you could turn your depth of field on and adjust that distance so that all of your close up stuff is very clear. But then way off in the distance, you've got a little bit more of a depth of field effect making this look a little bit blurry. So, and you can adjust the near blur and the far blur settings. And how far out it's gonna be using these sliders right here. So you can also adjust the background that's being applied. So um, if you want, you can have your mountains or your countryside, or in this case, this is blocked by terrain. So we don't necessarily need to worry about that at the moment. And then your visual effects, you can add things like filters and other things to make this look different. Um, I don't want to get too deep into those for this particular image, but you can see how there's some interesting settings in there as well. But all of that stuff gets saved inside of your, your actual image itself, and they're going to be different for every single image. But once you've got this set up kind of the way that you want it to look, what you're going to do is you're going to go into your export settings in order to export your image. So and this is a little bit confusing, um, but what you do is you set up your image inside of your media mode and then you export your image inside of export mode. So once you've got this all set up and you've got it set up the way that you want it to, oh and one other thing you might want to think about doing is inside of your images you might want to think about renaming them. So like we might call this living room, we might call this one kitchen night, kitchen 
day. So if you change those in here and then you go into your image mode, you can see how now these can be named based on what you called them. So it's a lot easier to pick the right image out of this list. And so you can adjust a couple other settings in here. I honestly haven't dug too deep into these. I just left them as on, um, but you can adjust those as well. But then finally what you're gonna do is you're just gonna click the button for start export and pick your folder. And you're just gonna select that folder. And so what that's gonna allow you to do is that's gonna allow you to export your image. And so once you've done that, you can just go find that image in that folder and you can bring it up and take a look at it. So, and one other thing that you can do is if you want, you can export multiple different images at once. So if I start this export, this will export all of these. However, that's gonna take a lot longer because it's gonna export three, image, three images instead of just the one. So you can export multiple images at once if you need to like do a batch render or something like that. Um, but I'm not 100% sure that's gonna be super helpful just because each one has individual settings. So I don't really know why you would wanna batch export these images, but you can definitely do that. So now all of those images have been exported and you can open them all up inside of that folder. So I'm gonna make a separate video talking about the actual settings for exporting video in the future. But for right now, this is how you would export a still image inside of Twinmotion. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Have you been able to achieve good results with Twinmotion? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.